All right, so this video is um, over a specific type of diagram that we use in physics all the time. We're going to be using it from here on out, basically, through the rest of the year, and it's known as an FBD. FBD, meaning free body diagram. All right, free body diagram. Basically, what a free body diagram is a simplified view of your situation uh, with all of the forces uh, involved illustrated on the diagram. So let's say you have, you know, you have this table. Here we go. There's the table. There's the nice little legs. And you have a book sitting on the table. All right, there we go. There's a book sitting on the table. So what are all the different forces that this book is experiencing? Well, we know that the book itself has mass to it, so therefore it has weight. So we know that the book has got gravity on it. So if we illustrate gravity on this, uh, say green for gravity, then we know that it's going to be pulling it down. Uh, but we also know that the table itself has to be producing a force on this, otherwise the book would be moving. So that means the table has to be pushing up on the book, basically in the same amount that gravity is pulling down. So what would a free body diagram look like? Well, simplified view, so here we go. There's my book. And uh, actually, let me do that in a different color. Let me go back to red. Okay, so there's the book, right? And then we said that green for gravity. And so gravity pulls down. We say that's the force of gravity. And then we say that the table pushes up. So there is the force from the table. It's also known by another name. It's also known by another name. And uh, it's also known as the normal force that we'll get to that later. So a free body diagram, this right here is a free body diagram, okay? It is just, uh, there's the book right there, and it is experiencing two different forces, the force of gravity and the force from the table. That's exactly what a free body diagram is, okay? Just a, a, uh, a simplified view of the world, basically. So how does this help us out? Well, if we get into more complicated scenarios let's say we have one box and here's another box and then we have a rope in between the two boxes okay uh, and then this rope is being pulled by some we're going to call it an applied force so fa so what would a free body diagram look like well the thing about free body diagrams that we have to remember is that they can only show what's happening on a single mass at any one given time so if we only look at what is inside that box, then let's take a look at all the forces that are on it. Okay, so here we go. There's our box. What kind of forces are on this thing? Well, if we assume that we're on a table, here let me draw on the table real quick. We're going to assume that we're sitting on a table and this thing is being pulled to the right. So what kind of uh, forces do we have? Well, I'm going to do green for gravity again. We know gravity is always there. So here's the force of gravity. We know that the table has to be pushing back up on it because it's not going up or down. So there's the force from the table. And then we also have the force of the string pulling that way. Okay, so there are the three forces that are on it. So that's the force from the string. All right. Uh, now, if we were to take a look at all of the forces that are acting on... This guy, the one that's in purple, then we take a look at everything going on with that. So here is our other force, our free body diagram for the other box. We know that it has a force of gravity acting on it, which that's going to be the green one going down. There we go, force of gravity. We also know that it, too, has a force from the table. There we go, force from the table. And then the string, in this case, is actually pulling it backwards is pulling it to the left so the string is pulling it this way and then there is an additional applied force this way that we say f f a applied force so these are our two different free body diagrams they are connected to each other in a physical sense by a string but when we draw the free body diagram we draw them in this way so we only take a look at one mass at a time but we know that they are connected and they are connected through the string force.
that means these two forces are actually going to be the same force because it's the same string. But this is a way that we can take a look at what's happening on each individual one at any one point in time. Okay, what would this look like if it was in a slightly separate, a similar situation? So in this case, we're going to have the edge of a table where there's a pulley and we have one block that is tied to another block with a string that goes over the pulley and here is our other block. Okay, So again we can only do uh, free body diagrams on, on either one of them uh, separately uh, not at the same time. So if we do the hanging block all right, we do a hanging block. So for this particular one we would have the force of gravity. Force of gravity goes downward, it always goes downward, there's force of gravity. What other forces would be on this? Well we also know that there is the force of the string that, that looks like a G, force of the string that is pulling it upward. Okay, So there's the force of the string, there's the force of gravity. Now nowhere am I saying that you don't, either these forces are equal or not, we'll get into that a little bit later, we're just working on the diagrams right now. So that is the force of gravity. So this is uh, the one in the blue box right there. Okay. So if we take a look at the other one that I'm going to outline in purple, then what kind of forces are on it? Well, just like the other box that's hanging, we know that there's a force of gravity that goes downward. In this case, we have to take into account that the table is acting on it, so the force on the table is going up, okay, and then it too also has a force from the string. In this case, it's pulling it to the right. So now these two forces, or these two objects, they're not uh, going along in a straight line like this one. Okay, They're going across and down a pulley, which means that they are too connected, and they are connected through these two forces, which also have to be the same. But we can just look at either individual one if we want to know what's going on with that particular mass. So things to remember about a freedom, free body diagram is that they can only occur on one object at a time. Okay, one object, and that they show all of your forces that act on that one object. Okay, and these forces are uh, drawn as arrows that are labeled. These arrows carry a specific name. It's, a, it's a, called a vector, which just means that the length of the arrow talks about how big it is in terms of the number, but it also tells in what direction that it's going. And we've actually covered a few other vectors uh, in class already. We just haven't called them that. Uh, if we think of something that has a number and direction to it, velocity is a vector, acceleration is a vector, all of that uh, good stuff. Uh, so force is just the next one down the line, and I'm going to actually start using the term vector from here on out. Okay, so this was a video on free body diagrams, and uh, hopefully you can now do this in class. See you later.